Welcome to the CondoVultures.com podcast with your host, Peter Zalewski, a Miami real estate broker, Wall Street consultant, and expert witness. This podcast is focused on identifying real estate buying opportunities in the South Florida condo market, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. The CondoVultures.com podcast is not authorized by the South Florida real estate industry and will most likely annoy many of the region's talking heads. This podcast will feature straight talk and salty language that could be offensive to some. Please remember that part past investment success does not determine future gains, especially in the South Florida's volatile condo market. For more information, please visit condovultures.com. Welcome to the Miami Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Zalewski. I have a company called Condo Vultures. You're tuning into our weekly market report. We take a look at statistically what's going on in the condo market in the Tri-County South Florida area. We're going to look at Miami-Dade. We're going to look at Broward. We're going to look at Palm Beach County. If you're not really that familiar with South Florida, it's real easy to kind of keep in mind. Miami-Dade is to the south. Broward County is in the middle. And Palm Beach County will be to the north. If you want landmarks, generally speaking, the um, diverse, multicultural type of community is primarily going to be in Miami-Dade County and to a certain extent, Broward County. In Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, his Mar-a-Lago facility is located up in Palm Beach County. But the three of them together represent basically the Tri-County South Florida area. That's somewhere in the ballpark of 6.5 million people or so who are living here. So for this particular podcast, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the condo market down here. We'll get into some of the details. We'll give you some ways to sort of age and measure the market to know whether or not it's a buyer's or a renter's market or if it is a seller's and a landlord market. So the idea is to give you straight talk, give you statistics that you can then go ahead forward and do whatever you're going to do in terms of uh, your either your interest or your quest for real estate. Now, a couple of things to get in mind before ultimately uh, we get into the um, various segments of the podcast. One, if you have any questions for us, you have any comments, please send it to inquiry at condovultures.com. That's I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y at condovultures.com. And point number two, I want to make to you, the statistics we're going to be using are going to be coming out of the multiple listing service. This is a database uh, that realtors use. So the statistics, they don't represent anything and everything, but it is a quick, easy way that most people rely on for their information. And what I want to lay to say about that is keep in mind, if you are a golfer and you want to join a club to get privileges to a country club or a golf course, you're going to join that country club. If you are a sailor, you might join a sailing club so you can get access to maybe um, not only the community that 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 frequents it, but also uh, maybe some of the dockage space. So people with real estate licenses, they also have an opportunity to join a club. And the club they join is called the Realtor Association. When they join that Realtor Association, they pay their dues and in return for their dues, they don't get a golf course. They don't get a dock space at some sort of marina. What they get is they get access to a database. This database is called the Multiple Listing Service. Anybody who is a realtor, they were able to go ahead and add properties into this multiple listing service, as well as get information about some of these properties. But it is by no means all of the properties that are currently trading or half traded uh, any, in any market around in the United States. It's just an easy, quick way to be able to take a look at what's sort of going on in there. Now, in terms of the validity and the accuracy of the database, there's been a lot of cases where uh, there's, be, the, you know, the, the, the accuracy has been called into question. So I would just sort of throw that out there, but it's a simple, easy way for people to get a sense of what's really going on in the housing market, generally speaking. But again, keep in mind, in order for property to be in the multiple listing service, a commission has to be offered. So if commission is not offered, property's not in there, you say, well, what would be an example of that? Well, an example of that might be a rental property. Keep in mind, we're going to talk about rentals as part of this overall episode. A rental property where maybe you see a big sign in the front and there's 300 units and says for rent. And there's a guy flipping a sign, you know, trying to get your attention as you drive by, or maybe they have some sort of wind character where, you know, they, they, they shoot a fan up and, and the character sort of going in the, you know, on the street to catch your attention because they want to get you to come in there and sign a lease. Those properties are probably not going to be paying a rental commission. Therefore, they're not going to be in the multiple listings service. So these are just sort of some of the things to keep in mind. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead. We'll take our first commercial break. And the other side of the break, we're going to talk about condos in the South Florida Tri-County region of Miami Dade, Broward, Palm Beach County. It's a simple formula and it works. Buy low, sell high. We're condo vultures. And when it comes to your real estate, we help you buy low. 
At Condo Vultures, we represent the buyer, and now's the time to buy. Log on to condovultures.com for more information. Condovultures.com. And remember, before you sell high, you have to buy low. Featured in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, 60 Minutes, and Time Magazine. Condo Vultures Realty, a licensed Florida real estate brokerage capitalizing on the condo correction since 2006. Welcome back to the Miami Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Zalewski of Condo Vultures. We're going to be talking about individual condos in Miami-Dade Broward in Palm Beach counties for this particular segment. So we'll be looking at all um, condos, regardless of price and looking at them just on a kind of a widespread basis. So what do we got going on in the market today right now in South Florida? Well, looks like there's just over 12,000 condos available for sale. The average asking price for one of these condos is coming in at just under $1.1 million. So this is the crappy, shitty ones in the terrible neighborhoods, as well as the most expensive ones in the exclusive areas. But overall, the average asking price is just under $1.1 million. Now, what does it work out to on a price per square foot basis? Which is really what I recommend um, you sort of focus on if you're looking to buy a condo. Don't look at price per unit or price per door. That can be misleading because a lot of times people will go in and try to purchase something or sell something based on a particular number. But it doesn't necessarily reflect the fact that a condominium is a commodity. Uh, it's no different than gasoline, no different than orange juice, any other commodity. That's really what a condominium is. Now, some people decide to upgrade and over-approve their places and others don't. But generally speaking, it's all pretty much the same. You can figure out pricing based on what the view is, based on what the floor is. It's all just a lot of stats versus a house, for instance, which is more like a work of art because the land layout could be different. The um, the size of the house could be different in terms of is it one floor, is it two floors, uh, what else, anything else that might be going on versus a condominium, which they all tend to be the same within a particular complex. So. Condo is commodity, house is work of art, and therefore there's a difference. So when you're talking condos, only look at price per square foot. So average asking price for a condo in um, Tri-County, South Florida area, 616 a foot, 616 a foot. And then the average number of days on the market for those condos that are available right now in South Florida, they've been sitting there for about 110 days. 110 is the number of days they've been on the market. Now, uh, in terms of transactions, what's going on currently? Well, right now there's just under 2,500 units that are available for sale in South Florida. Um, average asking price, about $674,000. Now keep in mind, um, the, the asking price for those units, which are not yet under contract is about 1.1 million, but the units that are under contract right now and known as pending sales, their average price is about $673,300. Now, what is that price per square foot? About 418 a foot, 418 a foot compared to 616 a foot for the asking price. And then finally, the units under contract, they were only on the market 58 days before they went under contract versus the current average for uh, listed condominiums for sale of 110 days. So you can see appropriately priced condos are probably going to go under, um, under contract relatively quick compared to what the current asking price or current number of days in the market uh, is for condo software. And then finally, First nine months of uh, 2022, so this would be January through September, you had uh, slightly over 35,400 units that traded. These are transactions for condominiums, 35,400. Average uh, sales price, just under $650,000 a door or per unit versus the average asking price today of 1.1 million. So you can see there's some uh, inflated prices out there, generally speaking. Now, some people will push back. They'll say, well, these are luxury and that's really what's for sale. I'm kind of looking at it on a macro basis to give you some context as to what's going on in the market. Average sales price in 2022 for a condo in South Florida, 408 a foot, $408 a foot versus the average asking price today, 616 a foot. And those units that did trade in the first nine months of 2022, they traded in 105 days, 105 versus again, the properties that are on the market today, they've been sitting there 110 days. So. They're on average on the market longer than those units that actually transacted and went through the process in uh, 2022. Now, a couple of statistics to keep in mind, the difference between the average asking price for a condo in South Florida versus the average transaction price of a condo in South Florida is about 67%. So there's a premium that's really being sought in terms of those people trying to sell. What we find basically in our experience is typically uh, a condo will, if it's under 20% of 
difference in terms of the average asking price and the average transaction price within a marketplace, you'll probably get some interest. And once it gets somewhere in that 10 to 15% uh, difference between the average asking price and the average transaction price, you tend to see a deal. So when I see a 67% difference in terms of asking price versus average transaction price, that means prices are very much inflated. Now, why would they be inflated? They're inflated because we're beginning our winter tourism season, which typically runs from late November or Thanksgiving holiday in the United States. And it runs all the way through sometime in uh, April or so, typically peg it to uh, religious holidays like Easter and or Passover. So um, 67% difference in price per door in South Florida for a condo. Now, what's going on on a price per square foot basis? About a 51% difference. As mentioned, 616 a foot is the average asking price today. 408 a foot is what units trade for in the first nine months of the year. And then finally, days on market. Those condoms that traded in South Florida, they traded in 105 days in the first nine months of the year, the ones that were going to actually uh, trade in the average uh, number of days in the market for those condoms for sales, about 110. Two other little categories to take with before we take the commercial break. In uh, the first nine months of this year, there were an average of 3,935 condos that traded per month. 3,935 is the number of condos traded per month. So if we take that average sales pace of 3,935, we divide it on what's currently on the market, which is 12,000 condos. We got about 3.1 months of supply, 3.1 months of supply. Now, this is a good indicator as to what's going on in the marketplace. Typically, equilibrium will be six months. So anything greater than six months in terms of supply means there's more product than buyers. And anything less than six months means there's more buyers than sellers. So right now, according to the, to the statistics, and just a rule of thumb of a six-month equilibrium, in uh, South Florida has 3.1 months of, of supply. That would indicate that this is a seller's market in South Florida, but it will also indicate that the price differential between what is currently asking for a condo versus what condos are trading for is uh, is dramatic. And then finally, days on market, those units for sale, they're sitting on the market longer than when it took in the first nine months of the year to sell one of these condos. So let's go ahead and take a commercial break. After that, we're going to get into the luxury condo market itself. This is Peter Zalewski of the Condo Vultures podcast. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And I wanted to alert you that if you uh, have a property that you're looking to sell in the Tri-County, South Florida area, I would encourage you to reach out to Jenny Corta, a licensed real estate broker with CVRrealty.com. She's my partner. She's been in the business for north of 15 years. More importantly, she knows the market. She knows how to get that deal done. And she also realizes that it's more important to get a price that you can accept and sell the property rather than to hold firm on some price that's never going to be achieved and ultimately languish on the market. So if you're looking to do, do a deal that you want a skilled expert who can help you sell a property, reach out to Jenny Hortis at 305-865-5859, 305-865-5859, or visit her website, cvrrealty.com. Welcome back to the Miami Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Zalewski. We're going to talk about luxury condos now in South Florida. Now, Keep in mind, luxury is in the eye of the beholder. It is a subjective term. Everybody has a different definition. And people with real estate licenses like to a lot of, blow a lot of smoke for everyone's ass. So let's kind of make it real simple. For us, luxury, from a statistical perspective, is going to be a million dollars or more. So if a property is listed for a million dollars or more, we are going to deem it luxury. If a property is listed for $999,999, $999, it's not luxury. That's our difference. So luxury for us is a million dollars. Now, when you get into the whole luxury play from a marketing perspective, then you have ultra luxury, super ultra luxury, exclusively luxury. So it's nonsense. A million dollars or more luxury, under a million, not luxury. That's how we're looking at it. So what do we got going on in South Florida for luxury condos? 2,643 units are currently on the market um, in terms of luxury. In uh, the average asking price for one of these so-called luxury condos, about $3.3 million a door, $3.3 million a door, and the average asking price per square foot, which again is more important from my perspective than it is per door. How much is something trading for? Just like how much is gasoline trading for? If you pull up at an intersection and there's three gas stations at the intersection, you're probably going to buy the gasoline based on the price per gallon. So think of a condo that way. So on a luxury side, $1,301 a foot is the average asking price for a luxury condo, uh, which you get a million dollars or more uh, listing price uh, in South Florida. And those luxury condos that are on the market, they've been there 152 days on average, 152 days is how long they're sitting on the market. Now, what's going on on the pending side in terms of outstanding contracts? 
about 355 condos are under contract. Uh, and these condos are the luxurious average asking price, just under $3 million a door, three, $3 million a door. Average asking price per foot is 1148, 1148. And then finally days on market, those under contract, they've been on the market about a hundred days. Again, you'll see the, the units that are priced aggressively. They're sitting on the market longer than those units that are not priced as aggressively. And then finally, in the first nine months of um, 2022, which is January through September, we've had 3,345 transactions with luxury condos, 3345. Uh, they traded for an average of just under $2.5 million per door or about 1046 bucks a square foot. And then finally, those condos that are luxurious that traded in the first nine months of this year in South Florida, Took them 108 days, 108 days. Um, now, what does it mean percentage-wise? Well, what we're seeing on the average asking price versus the average transaction price from a luxury condo perspective, about a 33% difference. Again, average ask is 3.3 million a door, average transaction price about $2.5 million a door. So that that 33% difference, once you see that squeeze down to south of 20% difference, you're probably gonna have some activity for a particular unit or a building. And once we then get down to somewhere in the say 10, 15% range, you'll probably see some sort of deal play out. Now on a price per uh, square foot basis, um, about a 24% difference. So the average asking price for a luxury condo, about $1,301 a square foot is the ask, where units trade for 1,046 uh, square foot. Again, 20% or less in terms of difference between the average asking price and the average transaction price for particular building, you tend to see some sort of uh, interest. And again, somewhere about 10 to 15%, maybe as low as 8% difference. You actually see the U.S. trade, but 24% difference. And then finally, days on the market. Um, uh, the average number of days in the market for our luxury condo in South Florida is 152 where, versus the units that traded. First nine months of the year, they traded in 108 days. And in terms of velocity, 372 luxury condos traded per month in the first nine months of the year. If I take those 372 units uh, trading as the like the, the sales based of velocity, I divided it once for a sale today, 26.43. And I work out what about 7.1 months of supply, 7.1 months of supply. As mentioned, typically you will find six months to be equilibrium. Now, some of the people who work in the real estate world in South Florida who deem themselves to be luxury type of realtors are going to tell you, well, six months is not appropriate. Um, it's more appropriate to do 12 months or maybe 18 months because these are works of art and they take longer because the asking price is greater. So if you buy into or if you drink in their Kool-Aid, they're going to tell you 12 to 18 months is equilibrium. Uh, if you go with the typical run the mill approach, six months or more of, of supply, is basically equilibrium. Uh, South, South Florida would be moving into a buyer's type of market, just slightly, but a buyer's type of market in South Florida for luxury condos, which are, again, are those units priced with an average or a minimum asking price of a million dollars or more. Let's go ahead. We'll take a, a short commercial break. The other side break, we're going to talk to stress condos in South Florida. Don't buy a South Florida condo discounted or distressed before taking a Condo Vultures correction tour. CondoVultures.com offers weekly bus and walking tours that focus on educating buyers on the how-tos of identifying discounted condos, analyzing the opportunities, and purchasing units. Every tour attendee receives a list of all condo projects in a particular market, a market assessment handout, and unmatched expert analysis. For more information on the condo correction tours, please visit condovultures.eventbrite.com. Welcome back to the Miami Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Salusky. Again, if you are listening to this podcast and your platform does not provide video capability, I'd encourage you to go check out Spotify, um, where you'll be able to actually watch a video and you'll see some of the graphics we're going to be posting related to all of these different charts we're talking about. So we talked about condos in the first segment in terms of product type. Then we talked about luxury condos in the second um, segment. Now we're going to talk about the distrust market. Now couple things to keep in mind. Now, when you're talking distrust, there's basically two forms of distrust where you have a realtor or some sort of real estate license involved. These two forms are something called as real estate owned, which is typically a property that a bank has already taken possession of through a foreclosure and or a short sale. Short sale is a property where the buyer of the property who takes on a mortgage typically has to sell the property for less than what is owed. So in other words, they come up short. So let me make it even a little bit easier. Typically, if someone is in trouble with a property and they have a mortgage, the first step they will try to do is to do a short sale. 
try to get the bank to consider selling the property uh, or allowing the sale of the property for less than what's actually owed instead of going through the foreclosure process. Now, if a short sale does not work, and a lot of times they don't because it's a long drawn out process where the bank wants uh, a particular seller to bring in as many offers as possible. And depending on the market conditions, and depending on the lender, they may or not, that lender may or may not uh, be willing to uh, take less than what they're owed out of the mortgage. So if that doesn't happen, then typically foreclosure process begins. By the time it runs its way through the system, the bank ends up with it. They then turn around and they sell it. And that's called the REO. So what we're going to talk about for this distress market is we're going to talk about short sales first, and then we'll talk about the real estate owned and or REO type of product. So what do we got going on in South Florida in terms of short sales? Well, there's only 16 uh, short sales currently listed on the market. 16. What's the average asking price per door for one of these units? About 283 grand a door. Average asking price per foot, about 241 a foot. So if you listen to what I was saying in terms of the overall condo market, as well as the luxury condo market, you can see these short sales are mighty attractive. Now, short sales that are on the market, they've been there an average of 80 days, 80 days. Now, in pendings, 18 short sales are currently pending. They're under contract at an average asking price, $207,000 per door, 207. And then price per foot is coming into about 207 bucks a foot. Been on the market an average of 142 days. And then finally, the transactions. First nine months of the year, we've had 45 short sales to close. Now, it's not a big number, but if you are successful in taking down one of these short sales uh, or distress units, you have an opportunity or a situation where you probably are going to uh, enjoy some riches as we go forward. If inflation continues, other uh, things continue to sort of uh, increase in price. So 45 uh, deals traded, short sale deals, condos traded. First nine months of the year, January through September. Traded an average price of 226200 bucks a door, 226200 per door, and on a price per square foot basis, about 223 bucks a foot is what these short sales traded for. And they traded uh, typically on average about 82 days. 82 days, difference between the average asking price and the average transaction price on a per door basis, about 25%. Remember what I told you, 20%, it starts to get interesting. They typically trade 10 to 15% uh, difference between the average asking price and the average transaction price. Now, what is that on a per square foot basis? Um, 8%, 8%. So those properties that are listed for sale are listed only 8% higher on average than what they uh, what they actually trade for. Why? Because a short sale dealer uh, or situation um, needs to bring in buyers so the bank can then take a look at all the offers and make a decision. Therefore, it has to be priced appropriately. And then finally, uh, days on market, as much as 82 days is how long it typically took for a short sale versus today, those properties that are for sale. They've been as short sales. They've been there 80 days. Now we have about an average of five short sales trading per month in South Florida through the first nine months of the year. And if you take that five month uh, sales pace and you divide it into what's currently available, which is 16, you're going to come up with about three months of supply, three months of supply, which as mentioned, six months is equilibrium. Anything greater than six months in terms of supply means it's the buyer market. Anything less makes it a seller's market. So based on 3.2 months of supply of short sales, we are in a seller's market, seller's market. Now. Let's go ahead and we'll flip over to real estate owned or REO. You might've heard that term again. What it means is the bank's actually taking title or the lender's taking title. And now they're looking to sell the property and recoup some of the money that was lost during the foreclosure. Currently 63 condos are listed as real estate owned or REOs in South Florida. Average asking price, just under $371,000 per door, $371 per door on a price per square foot basis. We're looking at 340 bucks a foot, 340 bucks a foot. They've been on the market an average of 59 days, 59 days. Now, in terms of units on the contract, 44 REOs are on the contract in South Florida. Average asking price of those units on the contract, just under 262,600 bucks. 262,600 is the average um, uh, asking price for those units which are on the contract. Um, average asking price per foot, 211 bucks a foot, 211 a foot. In 57 days is how long these properties been on the market on average. And then finally, First nine months of 2022, those REOs or real estate owns or bank owned properties, whatever you want to call it, that traded in the first nine months of the year, just under 300 of them have traded, traded an average price of $276,000 each or an average of $231 per square foot. And finally, they were on the market only 35 days. So again, properly priced product will go under contract and be gobbled up relatively quickly places that are more uh, expensive or inappropriately priced, they're going to sit on the market a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Now, 
in terms of differences in asking price versus sales price on a price per door uh, basis, the REOs are about 34% higher than what places trade for on average on a price per foot basis, about 47% higher, about 47% higher. So there's a good example where if you're looking at price per door rather than price per square foot, you might think you're getting yourself a good deal because it traded for 300,000 a door versus on a price per square foot basis, you might actually be overpaying. Just like some of the shenanigans and, and tricks that are played when you're buying anything at, at the grocery store or elsewhere, this is a good way to keep track of it. And then finally, at days on the market, those uh, real estate owned that traded, again, they traded in 35 days. The ones that are currently on the market today listed, they've been there 59 days. So you can see um, they're priced to the point where some of the your, your would-be buyers, they're not pulling the trigger and moving on it quickly, which to me, which suggests that the pricing is a little bit out of whack. Now, 33 units move per month in the first nine months of the year, which are real estate owned or REO or bank owned property. And if you take those 30, uh, 32, 33 units, which traded, dividing what's currently on the market, which is 63, you're going to come up with just under two months of supply. So this is a seller's market for distressed condos. Now let's go ahead. We'll take a short commercial break after. If you're listening to this podcast, think about who else it is. Do you want to reach that crowd, which tends to be investors, buyers, developers, lenders. Why not advertise on the Common Culture Podcast? To do so, give us a call at the office, 305-865-5859, 305-865-5859, or send an email to inquiry at condovultures.com, I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y at condovultures.com. Welcome back to the Miami Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Zaluski of Condo Vultures. We talked about condos and we talked about the luxury condos and we talked about the stress condos. So if you happen to buy one of these condos, you probably might consider renting it out because unless you want to live down here full time, many people who are investors are looking for second homes. They want to generate some sort of rental income. Maybe they want to play an Airbnb or home sharing type of play, but knowing the rental market isn't necessarily going to hurt you. Now, before we get into the rental market, let me uh, lay out the rules of engagement. Rules of engagement are this. To track rental data, there's basically two ways to do it. One is you get on the phone, you call all the leasing offices throughout South Florida. You ask that person who answers what the minimum rent is, uh, what are the incentives, what are the requirements, you know, first, last, and, and security, whatever the case may be. You put all that together and you come up with statistics. Now, the person who picks up the phone on the other side is effectively giving you information which may or may not be proven to be correct. So in other words, you're doing a survey. It's no different than a political type of survey. Nobody has time to do that. Some companies go ahead and they do that. They, they feed it to organizations, organizations that put it out and they claim this is a rental market. But be clear, there is no documentation that is tracked other than doing these regular surveys to track the rental information. Now, the alternative way to track rental information is to use the multiple listing service, which is what I'm doing. That is the shortcut way to do it. Now, keep in mind, Many buildings that are, you know, three, 400 unit complexes where they have a big sign outside that say for rent, those groups probably don't want to pay a realtor. And why is that important? Because if, if information is put into the multiple listing service, which is a database for real estate agents who join a club called the Realtor Association, like join a country club or a sailing club, they pay a fee and in return, instead of getting a, a dock space, if it's a, if it's a sailing club or instead of getting a golf course, if it's a golf club course community or a country club, what you get is the database. The database is where you're able to offer properties for sale, but in order to put something in this database, which is the MLS, a commission has to be offered. So if you are an individual who owns or REIT, real estate investment trust or anything that owns a 300 unit complex, are you really going to want to pay a commission? on all of those units in your particular building, what is that going to do to your bottom line? Keeping in mind that generally going the rental rate commission down here in South Florida is about 10% of the gross annual, 5% going to the uh, landlord side, 5% going to the uh, renter side. So much of the rental information that uh, is, is, is put out into the market, distributed in the market, uh, there's lots of doubts about the credibility of it. So I just want to lay that out to you. Now, if it is a property that is in the MLS where the realtor stands to make a commission on it, um, mm -hmm. it's giving you just a small percentage of what's really available. So I guess what I'm saying is don't trust rental data. It's the equivalent of licking your finger, holding it up, seeing which way the wind is blowing. It's as accurate as can be. Why? Because there's no recording necessary in terms of government records. There's no place to go in to actually track down a number. 
it's all sort of hearsay or surveys, much like the political surveys or, or polls that are done prior to an election. So that being said, let's get into the rental data for the multiple listing service, which is what I pull. Now we're going to have about 11,600 properties that are currently for rent in the Tri-County South Border area where commissions are going to be paid. That, that means realtors are involved. And what kind of properties are they? It's going to be apartments. It's going to be condos. It's going to be efficiencies, multifamily and townhouses. We're not including single family houses. We're also not including properties where commissions are not paid. I e a property with a, a sign in front that says for rent and they have multiple units for rent and or one of those places where some guys like flipping a sign, trying to get your attention, or there's like a wind, uh, uh, sort of character blowing in the wind, going back and forth with the traffic to get your attention. Chances are those places are not going to be in these statistics that I'm referring to. So 1100, 11,600, uh, places for rent in South Florida, Tri-County, Miami-Dade, Barrett, Palm Beach counties, uh, median. Now don't use average when you're using rentals because there's too much stuff in there. You could have daily rentals. You could have weekly rentals. You could have monthly rentals. You could have annual rentals. Trying to go through and differentiate what's what is just going to be a fool's error. So what we do is we simply use median. Median is a number kind of written in the So median rental price, ask $3,350 a place, $3,350 a, 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 a month um, rent uh, for a place in South Florida and on a median Per square foot basis, remember I told you, Liz, you're like, you're buying gasoline, you want to know how much is it per gallon. Well, the median rental asking price uh, is $325 a foot. That means a thousand square foot place should be going off for well north of $3,000. And those places that are on the market, uh, median number of days in the market, 41 days, 41 days. Now, in terms of places under um, contract, not yet uh, designated as rented in the multiple listing service, we got just over 4,700 pending deals. Uh, with a median price of 2500 2500 Remember, median ask is 3350 The median rental price for those that are under contract is 2500 So you can see people are very price sensitive. And then in terms of price per square foot monthly, 247 a foot is the median asking price for those under contract versus the overall median asking price, 325 a foot. And uh, the units that um, uh, are under contract, they were there 24 days, 24 days versus those currently on the market. Been there on a median basis, 40 windows. So again, price sensitivity. Those individuals who are pricing the places appropriately, they're going to see action. The ones that have pine the sky dreams and hopes of what a place could rent for, they're going to have a little bit more of a slower um, uh, uh, haul to try to pull off the deal. Now, finally, rentals. We've had 37,600 rentals completed in the first nine months of 2022. Um, again, where commissions are involved, remember, because they're in the multiple listing service, they they do not include the big buildings that say for rent on the outside. Um, median rental price for one of these 37600 that rented in the first nine months of the year, 2300 bucks, 2300 And what is that on a per square foot basis? 267 a foot, 267 a foot. And then finally, the place is rented in 21 days, 21 days. Now, what does it mean statistically in terms of the spreads between the ask and the actual transaction price? About 46% premium landlords are asking today versus what they rent for in the first nine months of the year. On a price per square foot basis, about 22% spread between the median asking price versus the median transaction price in South Florida in the first nine months of the year. And then uh, again, days on market, 41 days on the market is what the, the median um, uh, number of days is for a place currently for rent versus those that rented. 21 days. And then finally, we had 4,177 rentals completed monthly in the first nine months of the year in South Florida, 4,177. If I take that number, I divide it into what's currently on the market, which is 11,600. I work out with about 2.8 months of supply, 2.8 months of supply, keeping in mind six months is equilibrium. Anything greater than six months means the tenant or the renter has the advantage. Anything less than six months means the landlord has the advantage. Therefore, the rental market, uh, based on where properties are listed and a commission is being paid, is currently a landlord's market. So that would give them the advantage. But keep in mind, again, I'm recording this in December. So we are right in the beginning stages of what is the winter tourism season or the buying season, uh, if you will, down here in South Florida. So that's those are the statistics. Um, that's what's currently going on in South Florida. We're going to be doing this um, these condo market reports every single week. Um, if you have any questions for us, 
please send an email to inquiry at condovultures.com, inquiry at condovultures.com. So until next time, take care of yourself. We'll catch up very soon. Ciao, ciao.